What if you could make an LED glow exactly like a real firefly? Soft, fading, and perfectly timed using just one tiny chip? Hey guys, in this video I'll show you how to turn a simple LED into living, breathing light with a 555 timer and a few components. Stay tuned to the second part of this video where I'll explain how this circuit works. I've packed my favorite 555 timer projects into a free ebook. Yep, totally free. Don't miss it. Click the link in the description to get yours. Here are all the components you need to set up this circuit. 5 jumper wires 1 10 kilo ohm resistor 1 100 kilo ohm resistor 1 1 kilo ohm resistor 1 680 ohm resistor 1 1 N4148 fast switching diode 147 microfarad capacitor 1 220 microfarad capacitor 1 green LED A 9 volt battery buckle connector a 9 volt battery, 1555 timer IC, 1BC557 transistor, a breadboard to connect everything together. The 555 timer IC comes with 8 pins. There is a notch or a dot on the chip's body. Pin 1, located at the top left, serves as the ground or ground supply. Pin 2 is trigger. It is used to start the timing interval in both monostable and stable modes. Pin 3 is output. It delivers the result of the timer's operation based on its mode, either monostable, estable, or bistable. Pin 4 is reset. It is used to reset the 555 timer's internal flip-flop. Pin 5 is control. It allows you to control the threshold voltage levels that the internal comparators use to set and reset the flip-flop. Pin 6 is threshold. It monitors the voltage of the capacitor connected to the circuit. Pin 7 is discharge. It controls the charge and discharge cycle of the timing capacitor. Pin 8 is VCC. It is responsible for supplying the power to the IC. Let's set up the circuit step by step. Begin by positioning the 555 timer IC on the breadboard. The pins are numbered counterclockwise, starting from the top left corner. Refer to the later circuit diagram if you have questions about the circuit connections. Insert the 555 timer in the middle of the breadboard. A jumper wire connects pin 1 or ground to the negative rail. A jumper wire connects pin 8 or VCC to the positive rail. Use a jumper wire to connect pin 2 or trigger to pin 6 or threshold. Use a jumper wire to connect pin 4 or reset to pin 8 or VCC. Insert a 47 microfarad capacitor into pin 2 or trigger and the negative rail. The anode is in pin 2. Bend the ends of a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Insert a 10 kilo ohm resistor into pin 2 or trigger in pin 7 or discharge. Bend the ends of a 100 kilo ohm resistor. Insert a 100 kilo ohm resistor into pin 7 or discharge and pin 8 or VCC. Bend the ends of a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Insert a 1 kilo ohm resistor into pin 3 or output in a few rows below the 555. Insert a BC557 transistor into the breadboard. The base of the BC557 is in the same row as the resistor. Insert a jumper wire into the same row as the emitter of the BC557 and the positive rail. Insert a 220 microfarad capacitor into the same row as the collector of the BC557 and the negative rail. The cathode is in the negative rail. Bend the ends of a 680 ohm resistor. Insert a 680 ohm resistor into the same row as the collector of the BC557 and a few rows below it. Bend the ends of a 1N4148 fast switching diode. Insert a 1N4148 diode into the same row as the resistor and a few rows below it. Insert a green LED into the same row as the diode and the negative rail. The cathode is in the negative rail. 
Connect the 9 volt battery buckle connector to the 9 volt battery. Insert the positive lead to the positive rail. Insert the negative lead to the negative rail. We have successfully completed the circuit. Let's dive into the circuit and break it down step by step. This circuit is a Firefly LED flasher. Instead of a harsh on and off blink, it gives a short bright pulse followed by a smooth fade like a Firefly's glow. The 555 is wired as an stable oscillator. The 100 kilo ohm resistor, the 10 kilo ohm resistor, and the 47 microfarad capacitor form the timing networks between pin two, pin six, and ground. Pin 2 or trigger and pin 6 or threshold are tied together to the positive side of the 47 microfarad capacitor. Inside the 555, when the voltage on C1 falls below about one-third of the supply voltage, the internal comparator triggers the chip and drives the output at pin 3 high. As C1 continues charging through R1 and R2, its voltage eventually rises above about two-thirds of the supply. At that point, the upper comparator switches, forcing the output at pin 3 low. This repeating charge-discharge cycle produces a rectangular waveform at pin 3. With R1 much larger than R2, the output stays high for a relatively long time and low for a short time, giving long pauses and quick events, which matches a firefly-like flash pattern. Pin 8 and pin 4 of the 555 are tied together to the 9-volt battery, powering the IC and holding reset inactive. The exact flash rate is set by the combination of R1, R2, and C1. Larger capacitance or resistances make slower flashes, smaller values make faster flashes. The right side of the circuit is the LED driver and fading network. The 555's output at pin 3 is connected through R3 to the base of a BC557PNP transistor. The emitter of the BC557 is connected to the 9-volt battery and the collector goes to the junction where C2, R4 and the rest of the LED path meet. Because the BC557 is PNP, it turns on when its base is pulled low relative to its emitter. So when the 555 output goes low, the base of the BC557 is driven a few volts below the 9 volt emitter, current flows into the base through R3, and the transistor saturates. In saturation, it behaves almost like a closed switch from the 9 volt battery to the collector node. When the 555 output goes high, the base rises close to the emitter voltage, the base current stops, and the transistor turns off, disconnecting the collector node from the supply. At the collector node, we have C2 connected from that node to ground, with its positive terminal at the node. This capacitor stores charge and controls how long the LED glows. Also connected to that node is R4, which then goes to the 1N4148 diode, and finally to the LED, whose other side is grounded. When the BC557 turns on during the short low pulse from the 555, the collector node is suddenly pulled up toward the 9 volt battery. C2 charges quickly toward this voltage through the low resistance of the saturated transistor, and at the same time current flows through R4, the 1N4148, and the LED to ground, making the LED light up brightly. Because the transistor is effectively a strong, low resistance source, the LED turns on quickly and looks like a sharp flash. Once the 555 output goes high again, the BC557 switches off. Now the collector node is no longer actively driven from the 9 volt battery. Instead, the voltage at that node is held by the charge stored in C2. C2 begins to discharge, but the only discharge path is through R4, the 1N4148 diode, and the LED down to ground. As C2 slowly discharges, the current through the LED gradually decreases. LED brightness is proportional to current, so the LED smoothly fades out rather than switching off abruptly. The discharge time constant is roughly R4 times C2, so by choosing a fairly large capacitor and a modest resistor, you get a noticeable fading tail that mimics a firefly's glow. The 1N4148 diode is oriented so that current flows from the capacitor node toward the LED. 
It ensures the current path is well-defined and protects the LED and the transistor from any reverse or stray currents during the charge-discharge transitions. It also slightly shapes the voltage seen by the LED because of its forward voltage drop, but its main role is steering and protection. R4 acts as the LED's current limiting resistor, both when the transistor is on and while C2 is discharging. Without it, the LED could draw excessive current during the initial charge pulse. Putting it all together, the 555 repeatedly generates a short on command for the BC557 followed by a longer off period. Each time the BC557 turns on, C2 charges quickly and the LED flashes brightly. When the transistor turns off, C2 discharges through the LED, causing the brightness to decay smoothly back to darkness. This repeating sequence of quick bright flashes with a soft fade creates the characteristic firefly effect that gives the circuit its name. I hope this video has shown you how to make a firefly LED flasher with a 555 timer IC. Want to dive deeper into 555 timer projects? Grab my free ebook packed with awesome circuits and ideas. Just click the link in the description to download your copy now. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing for more electronics tips and tutorials, and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.